resources in which you can find your very own friendly local neighborhood therapist, no matter where you are in the world. You sign up and within 24 hours, they match you with a therapist that's right for you. And you can talk to your counselor every week via phone or video chat. You can also text them between sessions. If you or someone you know has been considering therapy, get started today with BetterHelp. Now let's get back to the show. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to quote, oh yeah, I love it. I'm going to quote uh, Seren the Healer here. She's one of uh, my staff members at our sanctuary and she's over the empath sanctuary and she's also a specialist in uh, human design. And um, she's always teaching us about it and stuff. I am by no means child. <laughs> I I know the little smidge a bit about my own chart, but I do not know a lot about it. But I know um, she always talks about like um, one of the placements in uh, people's chart that I just so happen to have where, cause you know, it talks about your aura chakras and all the things. So like I have an undefined um, root center, right? <laughs> so with me having an undefined root center, whenever someone asks something of me or I'm given a task, I have this insatiable desire to complete it, right? So I feel like I can't rest until the thing is complete, right? So I could literally be recording a video, right? And, you know, my kid could call and be like, mom, I want to eat whatever, right? I would literally feel like I have to like pause this reading, <laughs> go cook for my kid. And then I can come back because the entire time I'd be like, oh my gosh, he's hungry. Like, is he okay? Like, the so I, I feel compelled to do things. And I feel for the Piscean person who may resonate with this, you may want to look into getting your human design chart looked at because human design is very different than astrology because it's telling you how your energy works and like you can work with it so that you're not working against yourself and tuckering yourself out. Because I have this vibe that the Pisces person that resonates with this could quite possibly have an undefined root center. And I mean, you can totally like go Google your human design chart. And if, you know, the little box at the bottom, if it doesn't have a color in it, then you have an undefined root. You know what I'm saying? But anywho, but um, I feel that's kind of the thing because, and then I know Pisces too, because my two best friends and my mom are all Pisces. And I know that's kind of a characteristic of you guys, especially if it's people that you care about. It's like, you can't really rest with things going undone with people you care about. Like you feel the need to take care of it. But coming into this next week, um, the second week of February with the 10 of cups and also what came out is the three of cups in the reverse. This is saying to me that you guys need to focus on your own emotional fulfillment. It's not saying that you need to completely like neglect, you know, your kids or your job or whatever. But I feel that you need to take time out for yourself, especially if this is something that's carried over from like January. You know what I'm saying? Like where you guys had a plan to focus on yourself. And I mean, this could be a myriad of different things. You could have had a plan to, you know, set a financial budget for the year or to start working out or, you know, start meditating, like start taking care of yourself, like whatever the case. But I feel if you're not the one that stops it, you know what I'm saying? Because especially if I step back a little bit, looking at the eight of cups in the reverse, that's like not walking away from things that are no longer serving you. So it's kind of similar to what I say, like with the hermit in the reverse, it's kind of like repeating the same mistake. So it's kind of like if you were trying to break the cycle, you're inadvertently getting sucked back in. But I think the reason why you guys may not recognize it as that, and child look, with me looking at the fact that this is the chariot, I don't know if I said that was Cancerian energy. If you have that in your chart, definitely check it out. But anyway, um, with the chariot, that's the tarot card that represents like the energy that we're in in 2023. So if this goes all the way back to like, you know, your intentions for the year or New Year's resolutions or what have you, to where you were like, you know, um, I want to do X, Y, Z in 2023. This would literally, blah, this would literally be saying to me that in the first week of February, if you guys aren't aware of it already, that whatever it is that you had planned for yourself, not just for January, but what you had planned for yourself for the year, you haven't really put energy into that. You know what I'm saying? And if you haven't, the second week is literally your week to step up. So with this three of cups in the reverse, I feel that that's saying, as opposed to you kind of intermingling and meshing with everyone else, it's not saying to go into complete and total isolation or anything. 
But instead of you guys kind of intermingling and intermeshing with, you know, everyone else and what everyone else has going on, it's like you guys, the week of the 15th, really want to focus on what your emotional fulfillment looks like, what your happiness looks like, and kind of taking a step back. And like I said, with the whole human design thing, if you're an undefined root chakra person, it's like, this isn't just a temporary thing. Like, this is something that you'll deal with. And just like with me, I have to set healthy boundaries and literally tell myself, like, you do not have to do this at this second. Yes, it has to be done, but it doesn't have to be done right now. Because if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of anyone else because you can't pour from an empty, empty cup. I cannot freaking talk. I don't know what's happening in America. But anyway, <laughs> you cannot pour from an empty cup. And I always tell people, like, especially, you know, I'm a mom, those of you out there who are moms and dads and things of the sort, it's like, we have a tendency to, I don't want to necessarily say overcompensate, but it's like, you're a caretaker by nature. So you just feel like you have to give and give. But I always tell people when you're giving that you want to give from your overflow, you don't want to give from your reserves, right? Because if you give from your reserves, then you have nothing for yourself. So whatever you're giving to anyone, you always want to make sure you're full and you're overflowed. That's what you give. You feel what I'm saying? But anywho, last card that you guys have, we have the Empress in the reverse. So that's exactly what I'm saying. You guys are neglecting your self-care, right? Now, the warning that I give in reference to this is it can lead to burnout <laughs> and you don't want burnout. And God forbid... If you're a caretaker in any way, shape, form, or fashion, um, you have to take a respite, right? And that's whether if it's for kiddos or if you're taking care of, you know, ailing uh, parents or anything of the sort, you need to make sure that you're prioritizing your own self-care because that can lead to burnout as well as to compassion fatigue. And that is a plateau that nobody wants to hit because it's not fun. I've been there. You don't want to do that, you know? So I feel in the second week of... Um, February. And I mean, I feel the whole reading is really pointing to that. This is just kind of the culmination we're coming to at the midpoint of um, February. I feel this whole um, reading is telling you guys, Pisces, is now is the time to prioritize your own self-care, your own goals, your own dreams, your own fulfillment. Because I feel like I was saying, it's a responsibility. We all have responsibilities, but I feel that your responsibilities to others are outweighing your responsibilities to yourself. So you're thinking a lot about other people, but you're not putting yourself in the forefront and that's never going to leave you in a good place. So I feel all of this is saying, especially in the second week, the energy is in support of that, but you really want to start making yourself a priority and just utilizing a little bit of time management. It's not saying that you have to cut everyone off or be like bump them kids. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's just managing your time. And a little uh, tip I'll give to you guys that I say to my clients a lot of times, it's like, you know, <laughs> quick time management. Uh, I call it my three eighths rule. And we have three sets of eight. And every day there's eight of those hours that are going to be allocated to sleeping, right? Because you want to make sure that your sleep hygiene is on fleek, right? Then eight of those hours are going to be dedicated to work if you're working an eight hour job, right? So eight of those hours are allocated to work. After that, you have eight hours of seemingly free time, but that's really allocated to travel, to picking up kids. So I typically tell people to separate the last eight hours into four, like two sets of four. So one set of four includes like, you know, your travel time, you know, cooking, maybe like a little bit of chores, spending time with kids, helping kids with homework, things of the sort. That last chunk of four is totally up to you because responsibilities work <laughs> you know what i'm saying sleep all of that stuff is accounted for so everyone has four hours free for themselves a day if you manage your time properly so now the question becomes what are you doing with those four hours are you scrolling through tiktok are you scrolling through instagram <laughs> you know what i'm saying like, are you mindlessly watching TV? Are you staring at a wall? You know what I'm saying? It's like prioritize at the very least four hours for yourself. And I know, you know, depending on people's life situations and child, I know from when my son was younger, it's like sometimes with moms, all you can really get is maybe a hot two hours out of that four. You know what I'm saying? But even if it's just that, even if it's just two hours or it's just one, allocate some time for yourself whether that's towards you know your own self-care working towards your side business whatever the case 
You have to prioritize yourself. Now, at the bottom of you guys, <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, listen to your friend Marlo. At the bottom of you guys' deck, you have the tower in the reverse that's in a position of why is all of this happening? It's happening, uh, Pisces, because spirit is trying to get you guys to prevent disaster. Like I was saying, with this empress in the reverse, and you guys have what? One, two, three, four major arcanas here. With this empress in the reverse, that's like a lack thereof of taking care of yourself and self-care. So this is trying to help you guys avert a potential crisis because I feel if you guys keep going this way, it could end up blowing up, like I said, either with compassion fatigue, with burnout, or you just having like an emotional breakdown because so many people are pulling on you. So I feel now it's time to kind of pump the brakes, put a period on the end of the sentence and really allocate your time and make yourself a priority in the month of February, especially since we're about to go into you guys' birthday season. You know what I'm saying? Let that be an early birthday gift to yourself. So anywho, Pisces, that has been your soul session for the 1st through the 15th of February. I hope it helped. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you're interested in part two of this, they will be available on the 15th of this month, the day after Love Day. <laughs> on all of my membership platforms. That's our sanctuary, my women's organization and Patreon, YouTube members, Vimeo, all the places, you know what I'm saying? But if not, I still love your freaking face and I will see you guys sooner than later, my friends.